So you just got your DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and you want to turn it on and get started, but you're not really sure what the first thing is you need to do. So I'm going to talk to you about that today. The first things I like to do when I get my camera, the Pocket 3 specifically, and then at the end, I'm going to tell you one thing that everybody needs to do when they get their Pocket 3. And hopefully you learn something today and get started with confidence. First, of course, let's turn it on. No, 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 no. Okay, we're gonna wait to turn it on because you need an SD card. Get the proper SD card for your Pocket 3, a V3 or better. I did get a um, SanDisk ImageMate Pro. Mine's 128 gig, but it's an ImageMate Pro. This thing's pretty powerful. It works really well for the Pocket 3. Now, when I first got it, I put an old SD card in from an old phone I had, and it didn't like it very much, so I went ahead and swapped out for this more powerful SD card. I'll link these down below and ones that are equivalent and will do the trick for you. So uh, go ahead and check those out or go to your local uh, Walmart or wherever, but just make sure you're getting a little bit higher end an SD card that definitely says it's capable of 4K. Like I said, V30 or above if you're looking at SanDisk. After you've done that, you're turning it on and there's two ways to do it. We're either gonna flip our screen up or you're just gonna push and hold the uh, record button until it turns on. So flipping your screen out, it turns on. It's going to immediately ask you to download the Mimo app and go ahead and do that. So you'll go ahead and scan the QR code because the Mimo app currently is not in any of the app stores that I know of. I have an Android, definitely not in the Google Play Store or Samsung's app store anymore. It was for a while. Once you've downloaded the Mimo app, registered your device, you can go ahead and shut off the app and come back to here because you really don't need the app to operate the, the Pocket 3. It's nice to use um, when you're in a more intense scenario or whatever, or if you're uh, getting more in detail with your shoot, but you don't wanna have to hold two devices. Um, so this screen on this thing's great for just utilizing. The Pocket 3 itself, like I said, if you wanna get really in depth to it, grab the Mimo app and go from there. One of my last videos I did was on navigating the whole device as well as the Mimo app. And you can check that out here at the end, but watch the rest of this so you can get started properly. The next thing I like to do with every camera I get, and this is no exception, is get my rule of thirds going. So if you notice on the screen, there's really light white lines that show my grid. Now to get to that on here, we're going to swipe down from the top and then the little uh, gear over here, it's not really a gear on here, most devices, it's a gear for settings. It looks more like a nut. So like this little hexagon nut over here, click it. And then we're gonna scroll down pretty far till we hit reference line. And we're gonna tap that and grid. As you see, mine's turned on. And I forgot to mention this, but when you open the Mimo app, do any updates that are needed and it will alert you to that. So that's really a good reason to use the Mimo app. So if you're all the way updated to its latest update, it will give you the grid lines as well as a 2.35 by one aspect ratio lines, which is cool because it gives you like that uh, cinnabars on the top and bottom like this. So that's really cool. It gives you reference lines for it. You still have to put them there later on, but that's fun for if you're doing cinematic stuff. All right, the next thing I did with mine was change one setting on here that um, I didn't really like so much. So when you first get it, if you turn your screen back, it will power off. Usually it takes two seconds to power off. I turned that function off because I like the ability to just, without thinking about it, if I, if I want to switch to shooting vertically, switch the screen, now I'm shooting vertically. I don't have to say tap to stop it from shutting off because that's what you have to do if it's set for that. So as we get that fixed, we're also in the little uh, gear here, slash nut, and you go down like three down. It's three down on here and it says rotate screen to shut off. I put mine to never. You could have yours on two seconds now. <laughs> well, I don't know why it says now. You could have yours on two seconds or now. I put it to never. All you have to do is push and hold your record button to shut it off. I didn't feel a need to have my screen shutting off. Now that's a personal preference, but I do believe it's helpful. Once you've done that, you can just go and play with your navigations of it or just start recording. If you want to set all your settings so that you're recording using the 180 degree shutter rule and not doing too high of ISO, you'll want to go into your camera settings that are swiped from this side over here. So we swipe it over and this gives you your camera settings. Now, if Pro is not selected, it's going to look like this and that's likely what it looks like right off the bat. If I select Pro, 
it's going to give me advanced camera settings. It's up to you. If you're an auto shooter, leave it off pro and just let everything go automatic. But if you want the real professional settings here, you can do your manual exposure and then set all that stuff. So navigate all of this stuff and pick what you like or what makes sense to you. Talking about the 180 degree shutter rule, if you know what that is, then you're already somebody who wants to utilize this for advanced stuff and utilize it for all that it actually is capable of versus somebody that just bought it and wants to just pick up a camera and start shooting, which you definitely can do, but it's definitely capable of so much more. So setting all that stuff, I record in the D-Log M 10 bit. If you're not going to be doing any editing in post, go ahead and just record in normal. And if you have the latest update, it's going to be 10 bit color in that normal. When it was first released, it was only eight bit color in that normal profile. So I would not have recommended it, but the bits of color is a quite a drastic increase from eight bit to 10 bit. Now I don't want to explain that in this video, but definitely if you have a camera capable of 10 bit color, shoot in that 10 bit color. Now, this last thing is going to lead to my next video, and that is you need to learn gimbal movements and how to create a story using this camera. So if you got used out of this video on what to do when starting and you wanna see that video, hit the like button and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so you see when I release that video on the gimbal movements and ways to create a story using this little camera. That way, your next video is going to be epic. Check out that other video I talked about earlier in this right here where it's going to guide you through all of the setup and every aspect of the Pocket 3. And stay tuned for next week. Go shoot something awesome. Hopefully you're using your new camera. Don't forget to post your work. Peace out, guys. See you next week with that other one. Later.